Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Overwatch Weekly. This week, uh, not a ton of official um, news coming from actual Blizzard or Overwatch um, accounts or anything like that, but there are uh, some stories coming from other places, and there is one story coming out of uh, the Overwatch forums, or it's an Overwatch news post. I'm not 100% uh, positive where it came from. I think it's just a news post, but we're going to jump into that first, uh, and it is... The History of Mercy from Guardian to Guardian Angel. So this was posted uh, basically uh, just for the Mercy's Recall Challenge as a way to kind of explore uh, Mercy as a character and explain like where she came from and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to read some of the stuff that I find um, somewhat interesting here. Um, but the full article will be linked in the description uh, if you want to check it out. It's interesting if you like hero history and hero design. It's not as in-depth as... Some of the stuff we've seen from panels in the past. Um, but this is the kind of stuff I really like because I like heroes a lot. So um, I'll just read some of the stuff I find really interesting. But if you want to read the whole thing, like I said, it'll be linked in the description down below. Uh, so one of the things uh, is a quote from Jeff Kaplan. where He said, we had a class meeting where uh, Jeff Goodman, who's the lead hero designer of Overwatch, said something that just really stuck with me. I wish... He said, uh, instead of doing a game with six or maybe nine classes, we could do a game with 50 classes, but I wish each of the classes was very focused and had a certain set of abilities and they could all be wildly different from one another. And then that was kind of the basis uh, for Overwatch. Um, and then as the team revisited concepts from their past work, they drew inspiration from an early iteration of a healer class that had become cult and in Overwatch, this healer would ultimately become Mercy. Uh, and then they go into her, her backstory a little bit. Uh, which if you read the Guardian um, or the Valkyrie short story, you should know what it is. But basically her parents were killed uh, in when she was young, uh, working at a hospital. Uh, but then she became a doctor herself, became a head of surgery at a prominent Zurich hospital. And then uh, she had research into applied nanotech nanobiology, which led to a scientific breakthrough. Uh, that revolutionized the medical care by healing wounds at a vastly accelerated rate. And then that basically brought her on to Overwatch. She had her problems with Overwatch because she felt that they were using her research and weaponizing it for war, but she continued her work anyway. Um, and then we see everything from the Valkyrie short story uh, mentioned here at the end. So uh, but then they go a little more into her actual like design. Uh, and there's some, some pictures of some early concept art. Now what's interesting is we also, in like the, the, the thumbnail... Or like the picture at the top, they include some early, early, early concept art, and it looks uh, like very like original concept art. Because one of the things that has been a, a piece of kind of controversy with Mercy as a character is there was a point in time where they um, had Mercy as a black male, and a lot of people were like, "Why would you change that? Uh, you know, a character that there aren't many of in Overwatch. Why would you change that in favor of just you know a white woman, which we have a bunch of in the game?" But it looks like the very first original concepts for Mercy uh, were uh, a white woman who then they changed and they like tried something different, didn't like it, and changed back. Um, that's just based on what I'm seeing. I don't know if that's true. That just appears to be what's true because the concept art that they have in the picture at the very top is very kind of old. Um, I'll try to include some of it uh, so you can see it because I think it's pretty interesting. Um uh, because we didn't really have any knowledge of that was actually what was going on. So, but you'll you'll see some of it uh, there. There's some overlap with what you're seeing. Some of the pictures are the same, but I th think it's really cool just to kind of see how the heroes changed. You know, there was a lot of red in her original design. Her original name was just Angelica, um, but then they changed it to Mercy, which had originally been Farah's name. Which I don't know if I knew that. I probably did. I probably heard that once before and I just kind of forgot about it. There's some interesting stuff in this article. If you want to check it out and learn a little bit more about the history of Mercy, you can check it out in uh, after the link in the description down below. Next is an Overwatch 2 discussion that PlayStation Blog did. PlayStation Blog EU, I believe. Uh, maybe the NA one did as well, but I just have the EU one because that's uh, where I saw the video for it. Um, and once again, I'm not going to read everything here. There's a lot of stuff here. 
um, but they talked with Aaron Keller and Michael Chu. Uh, Aaron Keller is the assistant game director, uh, and Michael Chu is the lead writer. Um, so I'm just going to talk about some of the stuff that's in here. Um, once again, stuff that I find interesting, uh, but if you want more, obviously, check it out in the link in the description. Read the whole thing for yourself. If there was one objective for Overwatch 2, what would it be? Aaron Keller said, the world of Overwatch is incredibly compelling. We want players to be able to experience more of it than ever before. Uh, we're able to explore so much of this universe by playing this game in an entirely new way, through missions against AI rather than matches against other players. Story missions tell an engaging narrative about how the heroes of Overwatch respond to a new global threat. Additionally, hero missions provide a deeply replayable co-op experience through a wide variety of locations all over the world. Players will level their heroes and use different elements to modify their abilities and power levels. So that's your basic rundown of what Overwatch 2 is going to be uh, on the PvE side. Uh, Michael Chu was asked, what is the in-universe story you're aiming to tell? And he said, for the last few years we've been leading up to this story, the story of Overwatch 2 is the next step of the Overwatch story. We've been introduced to the main characters, to the conflicts and history of the world, but now we're moving to the next chapter. Winston has pushed the button and recalled the Overwatch agents to fight against the threats the world faces. Now we know that some of the heroes have answered, but what will they do? How will the world react to them? And is Overwatch the solution the world needs? That's what we're looking to explore. When asked if there was ever a reality where Overwatch 2 wasn't so closely linked to the first game, uh, Aaron Keller said it's uh, Overwatch has always been a world-class game uh, and we're committed to that part of the the game, like the team-based shooting side. There was never any intention of abandoning that side of the game in favor of the co-op experience and scoping out Overwatch 2. We always knew that we couldn't leave behind any of our 50 million players. They talk about uh, adding new heroes a little bit, uh, and one of the ones they talk about is Sojourn. Uh, and they say even though Sojourn is set to debut in Overwatch 2, it seems that earlier versions of this character appeared in prior cinematics. Do you know back then she would eventually be a main character in Overwatch 2, or did her status evolve uh, over time? Michael Chu said Sojourn has existed as a character in the Overwatch universe for many years now, even before the game released. She's a central figure to the Overwatch organization and a critical character moving forward. She's made appearances in different stories we told lately, but she will be extremely important to the events that take place in Overwatch 2, and we are so excited to finally be able to tell her story. They talk a little bit about uh, Overwatch 2 competitive play and whether or not it's going to be fundamentally similar to Overwatch 1. Um, and Aaron Keller said that it's going to be uh, different, but they're not going to share any concrete details. Um, they're just they're changing it, but they're not saying how much or what. Uh, Michael Chu talks a little more about the story, um, obviously, and, and Aaron Keller adds on a little bit. Uh, but one of the ones I wanted to um, just finish on is, is there any character model changes that folks may have missed? Um, and this is one that I was pretty sure was the case. Aaron Keller said, I'm not sure if everyone knows this, but Lucio's new look is dynamic to which song he plays. His hair and the visual effects on his suit change in color and beat he plays. His hair also glows in the dark. Pay special attention to gameplay footage of his suit changing between his speed song and healing song, and whenever he drops the beat with his sound barrier, continuing to update almost all the heroes with new looks for Overwatch 2, so we'll have plenty more cool changes to each of our heroes in the roster. Like I said, there's a lot of other stuff in here, uh, stuff about cosmetics, uh, and seeing if they're going to have many options, but I'm not ready to uh, talk about them yet because it's still too early. Um, but, like I said, link in the description down below to read this whole article. It's a lot of stuff that we already know about, not a ton of new information. It's a lot of just kind of continuation information we already know, so if you want to see that, the link is in the description down below. Next is a very interesting article. This comes from Dexerdo, um, which is very, very juicy. Overwatch leak reveals patch 1.43 allegedly delayed until 2020. Uh, so this is the one that's currently on the PTR. And the reasoning for this article, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to kind of explain what's going on because there's a lot of stuff going on. Trill, who of course is a player for the Dallas Fuel, posted a screenshot on Twitter highlighting a certain clause in the Overwatch Contenders 2020 rule set regarding patch details. Uh, and it says matches will be played on the live servers while the patch is still active and will move to uh, OPR once the mid-January patch lands on live servers. 
And then Dexerto says they confirmed some Overwatch contenders teams were emailed that specific clause from Blizzard late last week in the lead up to the 2020 season. While the situation could change between now and mid January, it's unlikely the patch will be pushed forward. So this is the one, of course, from November 13. Um, now, what's interesting about this is that that's what people are, are talking about. And this article is saying, well, we're not going to be getting it until mid-January, including Trill saying that. What's interesting, of course, is they say they confirmed with multiple uh, contenders teams. Second Wind, a contenders team, uh, tweeted out, who did you confirm with, Dexerto? No one we've talked to has gotten this email. So it looks like Dexerto pushed out an article without actually getting confirmation, or maybe it was confirmation from a, an organization uh, that didn't actually um, get an email. I, I don't know, but it, it seems like this isn't actually true. Um, so that is something of note. Uh, it looks like this isn't true, and I, I don't believe it to be true at all. Um, because we have the Winter Wonderland event coming likely next week, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense for that to be pushed out in mid-January when there's no reason for that to be the case. So I don't think this is a true thing. I think it's going to be pushing out whenever Winter Wonderland pushes out, because that's always how it happens. We have a Winter Wonderland event to... Um, expect um so i don't think this is true uh to be completely honest with you i think it's uh i think it's a, a lie um i don't know where they got this from i don't know how this became a, a thing and i don't know who pushed this out and whatnot but um i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna say uh this isn't true the final article comes from pc games uh, and it's, uh, I guess, technically comes from uh, an interview with Edge Magazine that Jeff Kaplan did, uh, to which Jeff said that a sequel is a brand new game with new gameplay and features as well as an evolution of the world. Evol or Overwatch 2 is clearly a sequel by my definition. He said, we've more than doubled the team size from the original game to make Overwatch 2. Uh, it'll feature multiple new maps for push, uh, as well as multiple new maps for um, pre-existing game modes. And of course, you know, a lot of great updates to the game's engine. Overwatch 2 is an order of magnitude larger than the original game, and therefore we consider it a sequel. Um, now, the writer of this article does not consider it a sequel, um, and I think there is merit to that because it seems more like a big expansion as opposed to a sequel. But who knows? Um, it's There's more to that article if you want to read it, um, but I just wanted to include it uh, just a little bit so you can kind of see where we are currently standing with Overwatch news. A lot of it is Overwatch 2, whether or not it's a sequel, um, and then obviously Overwatch contenders and Overwatch League and kind of pro play. That's mostly what we're getting at this point in time. So who knows? You know, Christmas is coming up uh, pretty soon. We just had Thanksgiving and, and BlizzCon was earlier uh, in November. So it, this is the kind of time of year where things slow down a lot, um, where we don't get as much news pushed out. Um, but Winter Wonderland is coming up soon. I believe so once that is pushed out we should be able to kind of uh, talk more about what is uh, happening with the game um, and we'll be able to talk a little more about that so that's all we have going on this week so thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed you consider liking and subscribing make sure to check out any of the stories or all the stories uh, in the description uh, but I'm going to get out of here so thank you so much for watching we all have a wonderful day and I'll see you all next time Bye-bye.